In the last section, we started talking about how we can include multiple features in our KNN analysis. We had said that we can kind of imagine that our distance formula plots all of these different points and then tries to find the closest point to our observation point. And so we would want to find the distance from this point to this point, this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, and then use that as our sorting criteria. We had said that we could use the Pythagorean theorem to determine that distance. So I want to very quickly go through a quick example and then show you one or two side topics you might be interested in. All right, so same example we were just looking at. We would want to find the distance from the blue point to the green point up here using the Pythagorean theorem. Now we're just going to go through this one iteration of this, but in theory we would want to go through from this point to this point and all the other combinations as well. So up here is the Pythagorean theorem written out in common notation. So we want to get this distance A on the x-axis between the two points. So that would be the difference in their drop position. So we would take the 350 minus the 323 of our prediction point. So there's 350 minus 323, and we would square that. We would then take the difference in the bounciness between the two as well. So that would be 0.55 minus 0.52, so 0.55 and 0.52, and we would square that as well. We then add those two sums together and then take the square root of the entire thing. And just so you know, these star stars right here is the JavaScript operator for a raising a number to a power. So star star 2 squares a number, star star 0.5 is taking the square root of something. Now I could very easily take this number right here and pl place it into some JavaScript console, like I'll just open up one right here, run it, and you would see that the distance between those two points is just about an even 27 units. Okay, so that's an example of how we would do a two-feature distance calculation. Now one thing that you might be very much aware of is that in our application we actually have three separate features. We have our distance, or our drop position, we've got the ball bounciness, and we've got that ball size. And we probably care about all three features. So how does this equation change when we have three features? Well, once you get into this Pythagorean theorem, adding on additional features is incredibly easy and straightforward. So if we want to add on a ball size metric as well, then we could imagine plotting all of our data points on a three-dimensional space like so, where we've got our drop position, our bounciness, and our ball size. In this case, our ball size was the same for all these different records, and at 16, and I just did that to make this chart a little bit easier to put together. But essentially, you can imagine that if we had different, different ball sizes on here, we would want to find our prediction point right here, and the three-dimensional distance to all the other points, taking that ball size into account as well. So to get our 3D Pythagorean theorem, all we have to do is add in this new C term right here, where C would be the change or the distance along the ball size metric alone. So in this case, that's 16 for both of them, so it would be 16 minus 16 equals zero. But you can very easily imagine that maybe if one of these was different, like say this was a ball size of 18, then the C term right here from this prediction point to any of our training examples would be something like 16 minus 18, like so. So as we start to add on more features, we just put in additional squared terms into this equation. The square root doesn't change. We don't put on any multiple in front of this. We just put in these additional squared terms. That's it. Okay, so with this in mind, let's take one more quick break. We'll come back to the next section, and we're going to start to refactor our k algorithm to take multiple features into account. So quick pause, and I'll see you in just a minute.